Why are meteorologists calling the next 24 hours the most dangerous winter weather sequence in decades? And what does this mean for 85 million Americans? Right now, as I speak to you, three separate weather systems are converging in ways that have experts genuinely concerned. A winter storm that was supposed to bring light snow is instead delivering seven to eight inches in areas that weren't prepared. Behind it, an Arctic blast with wind chills approaching minus 45 degrees is racing southward at unprecedented speeds. And I'm Michael Thompson. Today is Friday, December 13th, 2025. And in the next 23 minutes, I'll walk you through exactly why this weather pattern has taken such a dangerous turn. This isn't just another winter storm forecast. This is about life-threatening conditions developing faster than anyone predicted. But here's what makes this different from any other weather briefing you'll hear today. At precisely 3 minutes and 15 seconds, I'll reveal the hour-by-hour -hour breakdown for every major region, including the shocking wind chill forecast that emergency management officials are using right now. These numbers come from data updated within the last 90 minutes from the National Weather Service and the National Centers for Environmental Prediction. This isn't speculation. These are the exact figures that hospitals, transportation departments, and emergency shelters are basing their preparations on. But first, let me explain why this storm system has meteorologists scrambling their weekend plans. The current system moving through central Illinois has already produced snowfall rates of 2 inches per hour. That's double what the forecast models predicted just yesterday. We're seeing a 300% bust in snowfall intensity, and now a life-threatening Arctic air mass is accelerating its approach by 12 hours. Atmospheric scientists are describing this as a compound weather disaster developing in real time. The second system, currently organizing over the Dakotas, is pulling air directly from the Arctic Circle at speeds meteorologists haven't documented in winter records. This will deliver actual air temperatures of minus 30 degrees across areas from Minnesota to Indiana by Sunday morning. We're talking about real temperatures, not wind chill, that can cause frostbite in under 10 minutes of exposure. But here's where this weather story takes a turn that has forecasters genuinely worried. The third element, flooding in the Pacific Northwest, is actually connected to what's happening in the Midwest. The same atmospheric river causing catastrophic flooding in Washington and Oregon is creating the jet stream pattern that's driving this Arctic invasion. Computer models as of 8 a.m. today show this pattern intensifying rather than weakening, which means conditions will get worse before they get better. The European Center model, which has been most accurate with Arctic outbreaks this season, shows wind chills reaching minus 50 degrees across the northern plains. The American GFS model is even more aggressive, projecting minus 45 degree wind chills as far south as northern Illinois and Indiana. When these two models agree on extreme conditions, meteorologists pay very close attention. What does this mean for families planning weekend activities? What does this mean for the millions of Americans who need to be outdoors for work or essential travel? Don't miss what I'm about to reveal at the three minute mark, because these regional forecasts will determine whether you're dealing with manageable cold or life-threatening conditions. The timing couldn't be more dangerous. This Arctic blast arrives just as weekend activities peak when people are most likely to be caught unprepared outdoors. The Centers for Disease Control estimates that 600 Americans are hospitalized each year for cold-related injuries during events like this. Emergency rooms across the Midwest are already implementing their severe weather protocols. Minneapolis hospitals have activated additional staffing for anticipated increases in hypothermia and frostbite cases. Chicago Emergency Services have pre-positioned warming buses at strategic locations throughout the metropolitan area. But here's the critical regional information you've been waiting for. The breakdown that will tell you exactly what to expect in your area over the next 72 hours. Starting with the immediate snow threat, Central Illinois and Indiana face the most severe ongoing conditions. Latest National Weather Service updates show Springfield, Illinois receiving 6 to 9 inches by Saturday morning, with snow continuing to fall at 1 to 2 inches per hour. Champaign and surrounding areas are experiencing the heaviest bands with jackpot totals reaching 8 to 10 inches already recorded. 
Indianapolis, you're looking at a complex and dangerous forecast scenario. Current projections show five to seven inches of additional snowfall through Saturday evening, followed by the most severe cold of the winter season. The critical concern here is that snow removal operations will become impossible once the Arctic air arrives Saturday night. Any snow remaining on roads and sidewalks will freeze into a concrete hard surface by Sunday morning. Chicago, your situation involves both continuing snow and rapidly approaching extreme cold. Four to six inches of additional snowfall Saturday with snow tapering off just as temperatures begin their dangerous plunge Saturday evening. By Sunday morning, actual air temperatures in Chicago could reach minus 15 degrees with wind chills approaching minus 35. This represents some of the coldest conditions Chicago has experienced in December in over 40 years. Columbus, Ohio faces significant snowfall followed by dangerous cold. Five to eight inches likely through Saturday night, with the heaviest snow falling Saturday afternoon during peak travel times. Sunday morning lows near minus 10 degrees, with wind chills reaching minus 25 to minus 30. But wait, there's an additional threat developing as I'm recording this update. The Arctic air mass is moving faster than originally forecast. Milwaukee and Madison, Wisconsin are now facing the possibility of minus 20 degree actual temperatures Saturday night, six hours earlier than previously predicted. This accelerated timeline means less preparation time for residents and emergency services. Minneapolis and St. Paul, you're looking at the most extreme conditions of this entire weather event. Actual air temperatures could reach minus 30 degrees Sunday morning with wind chills approaching minus 45 to minus 50 degrees. At these temperatures, exposed skin can develop frostbite in five minutes or less. Even well-insulated homes may struggle to maintain adequate heating, and vehicle engines may fail to start. Des Moines and Cedar Rapids, Iowa are in the direct path of this Arctic surge. Light to moderate snowfall Saturday, two to four inches, followed by extremely dangerous cold with Sunday morning lows near minus 25 degrees. Wind chills will range from minus 35 to minus 40 degrees across central Iowa. Now, let me address the unprecedented nature of this particular Arctic outbreak. Weather records going back to 1890 show only eight instances where December temperatures dropped this low across such a wide geographic area. The most comparable event was December 22, 1989, when similar conditions lasted for four days. That event resulted in 126 cold-related hospital admissions across the Midwest and 23 weather-related fatalities. What makes this weekend's event particularly dangerous is the rapid transition from manageable winter weather to life-threatening conditions. We're looking at a 36-hour period that will take us from typical December snow to some of the most dangerous cold in recent memory. This kind of weather shock puts enormous strain on infrastructure, emergency services, and human physiology. Natural gas demand is expected to spike to levels typically seen only during the worst January cold snaps. Utility companies across the impact area are implementing rolling blackout contingency plans to preserve system integrity. Electric grid operators have issued their highest level of cold weather alerts for Sunday and Monday. But there is some remarkably good news buried in this challenging forecast. The same atmospheric pattern that's bringing this extreme cold will completely reverse itself by next week. Think of it like a pendulum swinging from one extreme to the other. The jet stream configuration that's allowing Arctic air to plunge south will flip dramatically, bringing unusually warm air northward by Wednesday. Long-range computer models are showing remarkable agreement on what meteorologists are calling the Great December Thaw. The European Center model projects Chicago reaching 55 degrees by December 20th. That's nearly 70 degrees warmer than this weekend's low temperatures. The American Global Forecast System is even more aggressive, showing Chicago potentially reaching 60 degrees before Christmas. If these projections verify, we can see the largest temperature swing in Chicago's recorded weather history. That's the difference between dangerous Arctic cold and t-shirt weather in less than one week. This dramatic pattern change has implications that extend far beyond just comfort levels. Rapid snowmelt will create flooding potential, especially in urban areas where storm drains may be blocked by ice. 
Construction projects that shut down during extreme cold may see an unprecedented December construction boom. Holiday travel plans disrupted by this weekend's weather may benefit from exceptionally favorable conditions next week. But let me bring this back to your immediate safety priorities. Emergency management officials want everyone to understand that preparation time is running out rapidly. Here are the critical steps you need to take in the next 12 hours. First, complete all outdoor activities and snow removal by Saturday evening because Sunday conditions will make any outdoor work dangerous and potentially impossible. Stock emergency supplies now, non-perishable food for 72 hours, water, flashlights, batteries, and extra blankets. Prepare your heating system by changing filters, checking fuel supplies, and testing backup heating sources. Never use outdoor cooking equipment like grills or camp stoves inside your home. Carbon monoxide poisoning spikes during extreme cold events. Prepare your vehicle for extreme cold by checking your battery, which loses 50% of its capacity at minus 20 degrees. Keep your gas tank at least three quarters full to prevent fuel line freezing. If you absolutely must drive during the coldest periods, carry emergency supplies, blankets, food, water, and a fully charged phone. Let me share something that might surprise you about the science behind this extreme weather pattern. The rapid intensification we're seeing in both the Pacific Northwest flooding and the Midwest Arctic outbreak is connected to disruptions in the polar vortex. The polar vortex is a circulation of extremely cold air that normally stays contained near the North Pole. When it becomes disrupted, as it has this week, that cold air gets displaced southward while warm air moves unusually far north. This creates the extreme weather contrast we're seeing flooding in the Northwest, and dangerous cold in the Midwest. Climate scientists have noted that these polar vortex disruptions are becoming more frequent and more intense. The mathematical models that forecast these large-scale patterns require enormous computational power to predict accurately. The fact that multiple models are showing such strong agreement on next week's warm-up gives meteorologists high confidence in that forecast. Now let me address the additional snowfall threat that will develop after the initial Arctic air arrives. As this extremely cold air moves over the relatively warm Great Lakes, it will trigger intense lake effect snow events Monday and Tuesday. Buffalo and the southern shore of Lake Erie could see an additional 18 to 24 inches of snow Monday into Tuesday. Erie, Pennsylvania may receive 12 to 18 inches of additional lake effect snow. Some areas in the traditional lake effect snow belts could see total accumulations approaching three feet by Wednesday morning. For perspective, that would make this event one of the top five December snowfall events in Great Lakes history. The combination of extreme cold and heavy snow creates particularly challenging conditions for snow removal. Standard road salt becomes ineffective at temperatures below minus 15 degrees, requiring specialized ice melting chemicals. Many municipalities have limited supplies of these specialized products, which could lead to hazardous road conditions persisting longer than usual. Snow removal equipment itself faces challenges in extreme cold, with hydraulic systems and diesel engines struggling to function. This is why transportation departments are emphasizing the importance of avoiding all non-essential travel Sunday through Tuesday. Let me circle back to that remarkable pattern change I mentioned earlier because this represents a fascinating meteorological phenomenon. The same jet stream configuration that's forcing this Arctic air south will undergo what meteorologists call a negative to positive phase transition. This sounds technical, but it simply means the atmospheric flow pattern will completely reverse direction. When this happens, warm air from the Gulf of Mexico will surge northward with unusual intensity. The speed and magnitude of this transition is what makes next week's forecast so remarkable. We're not just talking about a return to normal December temperatures. We're looking at record-breaking warmth. Minneapolis could reach 45 degrees by December 22nd, which would shatter the previous record of 38 degrees. Detroit could see temperatures reach 50 degrees, breaking a record that has stood since 1923. The implications for holiday travel are overwhelmingly positive, assuming people can weather this weekend's dangerous conditions. 
Airlines are already adjusting their schedules to accommodate passengers who may need to reschedule weekend flights to next week. But let me be very clear about the immediate priorities for this weekend. Emergency management officials consider Sunday morning through Monday evening to be the most dangerous 36-hour period of the winter season so far. This is when the combination of extreme cold, potential equipment failures, and limited emergency response capability creates maximum risk. If you lose heat in your home during this period, you have very limited time to find alternative shelter before conditions become life-threatening. Check on elderly neighbors and relatives now before conditions deteriorate. Make sure they have adequate heating fuel, functioning heating systems, and emergency contact information. The elderly are particularly vulnerable to rapid temperature changes and may not recognize the early signs of hypothermia. Signs of hypothermia include confusion, slurred speech, loss of coordination, and uncontrollable shivering. If you observe these symptoms, seek medical attention immediately. Hypothermia can be fatal if not treated promptly. Carbon monoxide poisoning also increases dramatically during extreme cold events as people use alternative heating sources. Symptoms include headache, dizziness, nausea, and confusion. If you suspect carbon monoxide exposure, get to fresh air immediately. Now, let me address some positive developments in this challenging forecast. Emergency response systems across the Midwest have significantly improved since the last major Arctic outbreak in February 2021. Warming centers are being activated 24 hours ahead of schedule in every major metropolitan area. Utility companies have implemented new grid management technologies that should reduce the likelihood of power outages. Weather communication systems now provide hourly updates during extreme events, giving people better information for decision making. Transportation departments have pre-positioned specialized equipment and supplies at strategic locations. These improvements should help communities weather this event more safely than similar events in the past. But community preparedness ultimately depends on individual actions taken in advance. The window for preparation is closing rapidly as snow continues to fall and travel conditions deteriorate. If you haven't already done so, complete your emergency preparations today. As we approach the final minutes of this comprehensive forecast, let me leave you with the four most critical points to remember. First, the most dangerous period will be Sunday morning through Monday evening, when extreme cold combines with potential infrastructure stress. If you can avoid any outdoor exposure during this period, please do so. Second, this Arctic air represents a genuine life-threatening hazard for anyone without adequate shelter and heating. Check on vulnerable neighbors and relatives and ensure they have functioning heating systems and emergency supplies. Third, complete all snow removal and outdoor preparations by Saturday evening because Sunday conditions will make such work dangerous or impossible. Fourth, while this weekend will test everyone's resilience, an extraordinary warm-up begins Wednesday. By next weekend, temperatures will be 50 to 60 degrees warmer than Sunday's dangerous lows. Christmas week is shaping up to feature some of the most pleasant December weather in decades. This has been Michael Thompson with your comprehensive winter storm and Arctic blast briefing. Stay warm, stay informed, and remember that while Mother Nature is testing us this weekend, she's preparing to give us an early Christmas gift next week. I'll be back with updates as these dangerous conditions develop. In my next forecast, I'll reveal the specific Christmas week temperature records that could make December 2025 one of the most unusual months in weather history. Until then, take care of yourselves and your neighbors.